I hollered, shoot, seat belts. Then I pulled the chute. And that's just such a gorgeous feeling. <sighs> it is holding and we're going down on the chute, the whole pair airplane. And that was just a, such a beautiful feeling, a feeling of comfort and comfort and joy, you might say. We're here at Aero, the grand show for light aircraft in Europe. This video is being brought to you by BRS Parachutes, who assisted with the financial matters of getting over here to Europe to do this. Now I'm looking at something really different, and I'm doing so with an old friend. Go way back in hang gliding days. Welcome to Eric Raymond. Thanks, and uh, we're going to look at Eric's latest project. Now, you've been doing things with solar power, electric power for some time. Yep, since... Give us some of the background before we come to this current aircraft, Eric. Okay, well, um, there were some other uh, electric and solar powered aircraft in the 1980s, and I started in 1986, and I made a solar powered airplane that was based on a human powered aircraft uh, named Sunseeker, and I've uh, continued the development, and this is our first two seater. And this one's based on the STEMI S10 motor blade. We molded the fuselage, and canopy, tail boom vertical fin all in the STEMI mold. And you've flown the STEMI uh, motor glider yourself. This is a very exotic, uh, sort of high-end mm -hmm. uh, motor it's, glider with immense wingspan and so forth. It's the, the best, highest performance side-by-side uh, -side motor glider in the world, um, 51 glide angle. And I, I took the best of that and added electric propulsion. Um, admittedly, this is, is slower. It's only got a glide angle of 40. So only 40. Only 40. But <laughs> Um, but it's got a sink rate that'll just keep you up forever because of the uh, light wing loading. So. For those that don't get that kind of glide angle, if you're a power pilot, just imagine this. You're, say, a half mile up, 2,500 feet only, with no power and no lift and no solar or any of the other things that this aircraft might have. You can still go 20 miles before you're on the ground. Uh, it's a rather amazing number, 40 to 1. So In the hang gliding days, we could judge where we were going to make it, and I found that in the high-performance sailplanes, you need the instruments. You cannot... You can't envision how far out that is. It's over the horizon you can glide, so <laughs> I'm always within gliding range of uh, an airport. But um, So now you've got some extra stuff, though. You've got, mm -hmm. an, uh, you've got an electric aircraft here. We looked at the wings earlier. They are completely covered with solar cells, mm -hmm. including the horizontal stabilizer. Yep. Um, but you don't fly solely on that. You have batteries as well, right? Tell us the thinking. Well, um, in order to have, there were initially some purely solar powered airplanes, and it, they could only fly in the middle of the day when the sun was you know, shining right on top of them. So ah, it's sure. not at all practical. The idea is to have a small battery pack that gives you, uh, luckily now we have lithium polymer batteries that can really give you the power for a short time, 20 minutes in this case. You can go just full throttle, 20, uh, 20 25 kilowatts for, uh, for 20, 25 minutes, and that gives us a good safe climb. Okay, okay climb so climb. you told me earlier now we've got the battery power that gives you the extra juice that you need to launch and get up. And as a soaring pilot, Eric is a very accomplished soaring pilot, yep. uh, and some of us that know a thing or two about that know you can use lift, various kinds of lift to get up. Oftentimes, you'll find the best lift under clouds. Well, under a cloud is not where the best sunshine is, right. so you're using uh, thermal lift mm -hmm. or convective lift to get up, but then what happens? I'm charging the batteries while I'm soaring. In, even you do get a lot of energy, right? Yeah, you're not uh, using any energy then. Uh, that is, you're not using any electrical energy then. You're using natural. Well, energy. the solar energy goes into the battery and it's charged up from empty in less than 90 minutes. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Normally, it's. I don't generally run the battery down because I'm looking for the first uh, first opportunity to soar to find some lift to go up. Okay. So, so how, how long is the wing and how many solar cells are involved? Um, <laughs> it's a. Uh, Let's see, it's 22 meters uh, wingspan, and there's about 1,500 solar cells. They each make 3 watts, so it comes out to about 4,500 watts of uh, solar power. Wow, it sounds like a lot. It's more than enough, but it's, uh, what do you think, what is that, six, seven horsepower? Wow. It goes, goes and goes and goes and goes. And even if you had drained the battery, you could fill it back up in that time, mm -hmm. assuming, of course, adequate solar power hitting the, or sun power hitting the solar panels. 
And then uh, you said you actually, you know, you fly up through a blue hole or however you get up mm -hmm. through. Now you're on top of the clouds. Nah, on top of the clouds, that. a soaring pilot knows, well, there, there, there may be wave lift or some other phenomenon, mm -hmm. but, but not the same kind of lift that probably got you up there in the first place. Mm -hmm. Now what? Well, it's, it's generally completely smooth um, and cold and bright, which is perfect for solar. The solar panels produce more electricity the colder it is. All is that the way, right? All the way down. It's, it's one of those superconductivity things. It's, solar cells are a semiconductor, and the better cooled they are, the less internal losses there are. Ah, I see. Okay. So uh, they're doing really good when you're above yeah. the clouds, yeah. it's yeah. glorious and blue sky up there, and you got lots of sun hitting the solar panels. Mm -hmm. Can you sustain with solar um, panel uh, even juice alone? I flew it. Uh, I flew my single seater until November 14th in Switzerland. I was still able to sustain. Over the Is that right? So, so you're using nothing but the sun shining on you then, with the engine, with the motor running. Mm -hmm. uh, you're above soaring conditions now, but you're still just scooping along, basically as long as the sun shines. Yeah. Now, are you bringing this out into the uh, market now, or this is a personal? Uh, it's just a proof of concept, um, but uh, we've added, it's, it's, this is a touring aircraft for my wife and I. We're going on some long distance adventures. Uh, You're looking forward to that? Of <laughs> <laughs> so we, I, in my last airplane, I went from, I was based in Zurich, Switzerland, and I went down to Sicily, the south of Spain, and to Slovenia, where I met my wife. Ah, uh, you're from Slovenia, huh? We go visit your country later this week, so look forward to that. You're welcome. Hope we got good weather there. Here we have room for a full-size uh, SLR with two two spare lenses, two oh, change great. lenses. And if one one issue that I had on my last airplane was in a real electrical emergency, because we stopped the propeller electronically, otherwise it windmills. Ah, I see. Okay, you have to actually brake it. So we have a bicycle brake, oh. <laughs> hydraulic bicycle brake stop the prop because we're, we're planning to cross for example the Caspian Sea and from 10,000 feet I can we only have to climb to 10,000 feet at the halfway point it's 125 miles okay. over the ocean looking for, I've already done most of Europe in my last airplane so we're looking for unexplored territory okay. and uh, we've got some friends we want to visit in Greece and uh, Turkey and then continue into Georgia Armenia uh, explore the uh, Aral Mountains and eventually cross the Caspian Sea from Azerbaijan. It's still a single engine aircraft. The electric is far more reliable, in my opinion, than a piston aircraft. Um, but um, I still don't completely trust one engine over water. That's uh, probably a smart move to make. So get to 10,000 feet, then you can make either side. Yep. <laughs> and uh, then you're smiling all the while too. So that's good. Yeah. Well, Eric, a lot of great information about your fascinating projects. Is there a way we can follow your exploits on the web? On my website is uh, solar-flight.com, minus the sign between solar and flight. There you go. Speaking with Eric Raymond here at Aero 2013. We want to follow more about this. We want to hear about the Caspian Sea project. We'll do my best to cover some of that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us here at Aero. life in a good-natured perspective is a common practice of pilots. Come on. Come on. Rancher and pilot Albert Kolk will tell you that, especially after the flying adventure he, his grandson Jordan, and two friends endured on a nighttime flight back from Seattle, crossing the rugged Manishi Mountains in British Columbia. It was a beautiful night. You could distinguish that. You could distinguish the odd river and some water below, but that's about all. There was no moon, but... Uh, very bright, clear night. So everything was going well until uh, something went wrong. I had completely forgotten about the shoot right about then. And then he said shoot and I remembered and all of a sudden, just like everything kind of put it in perspective a bit. It was a lot nicer. You, you, you realize that you do have some security, some safety in that. I hollered, shoot, seat belts. And I pulled back the power, turned off the ignition and whatever needed to be done. Then I pulled the chute. There was a little explosion, which was good to hear. It's kind of loud, but it's good to hear that explosion. But what was even better to hear, when 
that parachute started to deploy. And when, when it first starts to deploy, there's that ring above that that holds it for a ways, and then it starts to deploy more and more. And that's just such a gorgeous feeling. <sighs> it is holding, and we're going down on the chute, the whole pair airplane. And that was just a, such a beautiful feeling, a feeling of comfort and comfort and joy, you might say. Albert's airplane floated safely to the ground. We got a great landing. The parachute hooked a tree and it brought us around really slowly and set us down on, it was a fairly steep incline, but it was set us down in a really nice place. There was no trees. There was trees on both sides of us, but not where we landed. It was almost the perfect landing spot. And you all walked away. Yeah, everybody got out of the plane and walked away without a bruise, without a scratch, without anything. What is your life worth? What is the life of your loved ones worth? The ones you carry, whether it's your grandson or granddaughter or child or girlfriend or wife? What's their life worth? Can you count that in dollars and cents? No way. Pull the chute, you walk away. Thank you.